everybody, my name is Andy Roberts. Um, I first came to Brazil uh, seven years ago. Um, since then I've finished university, I've come back uh, to Brazil, got married uh, to a Brazilian girl called Rosie, and we are now both CMS mission partners, uh, working here in the northeast of Brazil uh, with a street children's project called My Father's House, and with an Anglican church uh, called Living Waters, uh, which is based on the rubbish dump and a, and a shanty town. Uh, we hope that this video uh, will show you a little bit more about what we do uh, in Brazil and should give you a good idea of, of the stuff that we get up to. Uh, thanks to everybody for your support. Um, if you'd like to know more, then please feel free uh, to get in touch with us. But uh, until then, uh, enjoy uh, this video. Brazil is famous for three things. Uh, firstly, it's famous for its football very passionate about football here. Secondly, it's famous for its beaches, beautiful beaches here in Brazil. But thirdly, it's also infamous uh, for its street children. Uh, recent statistics uh, show that there are 25 million children here in Brazil living in underprivileged conditions. Eight million of those live on the streets. And the statistics show that a third of those children will be killed by the age of 18. So the situation is serious. Uh, this is footage of the rubbish dump. Um, and the majority of the boys in my father's house come from the surrounding area around this rubbish dump. Uh, most have had to leave home uh, due to abuse, um, either physically or sexually or, or even both. Or due to their parents being addicted to drugs or to alcohol. And anyway, they tend to wind up here, on the rubbish dump, where they pick through rubbish, find things to eat, or recyclables, uh, things to recycle to get, uh, to get some money. Um, but the thing is, the worst thing is, is that they, these boys will quickly become involved in the many gangs, the drug gangs that they are around the, the, around the shanty town. And these boys quickly discover that selling cocaine is actually a much better career path than picking through rubbish for a living, and so they join the gangs as avianzinhos, now these are boys as young as 9 or 10 uh, joining join the gang. Uh, so these Avignon are actually delivery boys. And so boys as young as 9 or 10 are running around the favela uh, delivering uh, drugs or money uh, for the gangs. And uh, these boys, can they are quickly promoted through the gang. Uh, they become soldiers. This is when they get given a gun and told to guard and protect their patch. And so boys as young as 11 or 12 are getting guns and are doing exactly that. Um, and the, the gang leaders are only around 16 or 17 years old. And so this is really a serious thing. And so obviously a career in the gang is, is a pretty dangerous career path. And a boy's life will quickly become endangered uh, due to rival gangs or due to their own gang if they, if they do something uh, wrong. And this is exactly when my father's house tries to step in and tries to save these boys. It's a race against time. Uh, since local government statistics show that just on our favela, which is a very small favela, it's about the size of a large village, the statistics show that four young people on average are killed each week due to gang violence. And so it's very, very serious. And so my father's house takes in these boys and tries to save them, both physically from their surroundings and spiritually through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, Rosie and I are both youth workers as well. Uh, we lead the, uh, the 18 and overs group at Living Waters Church and so we do a lot of things with them. We do a lot of Bible studies uh, to help them in the faith and also we're um, a part of this new project called Transform which is based on the message in Manchester and so we go out onto the shanty town to do a lot of urban evangelizing um, and so things to attract the youth of today into the church and get them to meet with, uh, with the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, this here is my father's house. My father's house is a lovely big house uh, just by the beach, uh, far away from the shanty town, so it's a place where the boys uh, can be safe. Uh, we currently have 12 boys in my father's house. Uh, they all go to school um, to catch up on their lost education, uh, to do lots of activities in the house, devotionals, and we also work closely uh, with their families in the hope that one day uh, they might be able to return to their families. 
and my father's house currently only works with boys, but there are also many girls on the streets, and not so many as there are boys, but the trouble is, is that the girl situation is a lot worse. You see, when a boy is on the street, uh, he can he can steal uh, to survive, um, he can do things to get food, but the trouble is that the girl can't do that, and so a girl ends up selling herself um, and, and to survive. And so these girls here are, are, are two girls about 11 years old, but they're both prostitutes on the streets. And if that doesn't get you, there is something wrong with you. That cannot happen in a world like ours. And so it's been a dream of mine and Rose's for a long time uh, to open up an, another project, uh, to work with girls as well as boys, because that breaks our hearts. It's been amazing to see the changes in the boys as well once they, once they come to my father's house. Um, these boys haven't been rejected all their lives. They jump upon hearing that there is a God who loves them. And we've had many success stories over the years. Unfortunately, this work is also very, very hard work. And in the past two years, three of our ex-boys um, have, have been killed, have been shot and killed by the gangs. Uh, Haphael, uh, Davison, and Jonathan. Uh, if I can, I'd like to tell you a little bit about, about Jonathan. Uh, Jonathan came, uh, first came to the project about two and a half years ago. Um, uh, he came to us because uh, he had done something very, very wrong in the gang, and his gang, they, they were after him, they wanted to kill him, and we never actually found out exactly what it was that Jonathan had done, but it was obviously something uh, very, very serious. And so he came to our project, he stayed with us for, uh, for about six months until he ran away. He ran away from the project and he went back home. Um, and the gangs um, eventually caught up with him and, and they shot him uh, in, in the shoulder. And fortunately he survived and Jonathan um, uh, went to hospital uh, where me and another worker, we went to, we went to visit Jonathan to, to try and talk some sense, in, sense into him to see if we could help him. Uh, in any way, and I actually, I remember I actually paid for him to go and stay with his grandma on the bus, a long way away uh, from the city, so a long way away from the gang, uh, somewhere that he, that he could be safe. And so Jonathan went, and I remember he spent a few months with his grandma, uh, he was doing really well, he was, he was working, uh, getting some money, and surviving, which is the most important thing. Um, but then his mum, who has mental problems, and this shows you that sometimes it's not just the boy which is the problem, it's actually the family. And anyway, so this, so this mum who has mental problems uh, became jealous of his grandma having custody of her son and so went and got Jonathan and brought him back to the city uh, where a few days later uh, the gang finally caught up again with Jonathan and this time uh, they killed him. They shot him five times in the head and he died on, on Christmas Eve uh, two years ago. And so that was Jonathan's story. Uh, the Bible says that the devil comes to, to steal, to destroy, and to kill. And that is exactly what he does all over the world, but perhaps it's more evident in the life of these boys. He steals their lives, destroys their lives, and then eventually kills them. And then these boys, in turn, they steal, destroy, and kill to survive. But there is hope. The Bible also says in John's Gospel, Jesus says that I have come so you might have life and life to the full. And that is exactly what we in my father's house try to tell these boys, that, that, that there is life in Jesus Christ. And that is also what we, the wider church, try to tell the world, that there is life in Jesus Christ. Uh, we thank you all so much for, for, for taking your time to watch this video and, and to hear a little bit more about what Rosie and I get up to uh, here in Brazil. Um, if you'd like to know more about our work or get in touch with us, then please do email me if you want to receive our newsletters or, you, or you'd like to support us uh, prayerfully or financially, or perhaps you'd actually like to come and spend some time in Brazil uh, as a volunteer, then please do uh, get in touch with us. And I'd just like to take this opportunity to thank you all so much uh, for your support and we hope uh, to see you soon. God bless. Bye.